Hello everyone, this is Pastor Donna Hankler with the Big Four PH Church in Kimball, West Virginia. And I'm so glad that you've joined us today. We've been doing YouTube through the COVID and we've been able to reach a lot of people. And we're so excited. Last Saturday we had a wonderful baptism service. Uh, one of the online um Persons got online and um, they accepted Jesus, become a disciple of Jesus Christ, and had a baptism in Hungry Mother Lake. And you can view that on YouTube. This person gave you permission to do that by his permission. So we're talking about today about a new you. This person that joined us online and received Christ, and he has given you permission to view that online. He is a new you, <clears throat> and Jesus makes us new. So, you know, God has good things in store for us, and I just love the title of this message, A New You. I hope you've had a great week, and I hope you will just get right in the Word with us, get your Bibles, join us, invite others, because the Word of God, it says in His, and He says in Isaiah that His Word that goes forth, it does not return unto Him void. This Word that is going forth is going to nurture your heart and soul and spirit and encourage you and let you know that you can be a new you in Christ. And Father, I pray today for each and every one today that, that is joining us. I pray that they will be encouraged. I pray that others will join, that they will invite others, and that others will hear the word and know that they can be a new you in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. And just a little um, introduction here. You know that YouTube is a, is a valuable tool, tool to spread the gospel, and we're very thankful to be on there, but we need your participation to stay on there. We truly need you or a new person to hit the subscriber button. That does not mean that you're going to pay anything, but you will get notices. We absolutely need more people to hit the subscriber button. We absolutely need you to hit the thumbs up that you like the message and to give a comment such as good morning, amen, or this message is for me, or something encouraging so that shows us that we have participation on YouTube. Now join with us in Matthew 3 at the baptism of Jesus and we are talking about a new you and this message comes from this baptismal service last Saturday at the Hungry Mother State Park. It's a beautiful service and I thank God for this a disciple in Christ, has a lot of faith, is an amazing person, very positive person in Christ and has truly become a disciple of Jesus Christ. But let's look at the baptism of Jesus. Jesus was baptized before he actually began his ministry of those many miracles of raising the dead and healing the sick. And we're going to look at Matthew 4, 13. And then comes Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan and to John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him saying, you know, I'm the one that needs to be baptized by you. And you come to me. And Jesus said to him, suffering it be so now. For thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting upon him. And a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Look at this phenomenal baptism of Jesus Christ. Look at this awesome scene. The heavens were opened. And you know, and it, and it says that, that a spirit of God descended upon him like a dove lighting upon him. And that voice from heaven saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. As I was studying and preparing for the baptismal messages, I noted that one minister said that often with his baptismal ministers, ministries that, that he sensed the presence of angels there at those baptismal ministries. And I don't doubt it because the heavens are open. So Jesus was a new man. He began a, a powerful ministry after this baptism. He, he went into the wilderness of temptation, but then he began a very powerful ministry of raising the dead, healing the sick, the blind, and so forth. Now we're going to look at another um, baptism, and I, I want you to just go with me to the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new, or come new. You know, Christ gives us life, 
and the sins of your past, the mistakes of your past are put behind. Forgiveness has been granted to you. In the act of repentance, but when you repent, there's forgiveness. And you have right standing with God, which is a wonderful feeling. And then Jesus also tells us in John 10.10, 10, he says, I have come to give you life more abundantly. He says, the thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. You can enjoy life now. Life can be full of meaning and joy in Christ. You know, that scripture came alive to me because when I was in college, I was going through a, a difficult time. There was a lot of struggles with the studies, the pressures of the studies, uh, struggling to make the basketball team, struggling to play, just a lot of struggles. And I was having a lot of struggles and I sat down on my bed and I said, Father, Jesus said these words that he's come to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. And I said, I need that abundant life right now. Yes, I'm a Christian, but I'm not living that abundant life. Immediately, the peace of God began to come upon me, and things began to change. Things began to get easier, and I sensed the power of the Holy Spirit helping me through some difficult moments in college. And I experienced that abundant life of Jesus Christ. Let's look at some people who had... A new life in Christ. And we're going to start with Acts 8. A little more messages on the baptisms. And stay with me to Acts 8. This is when Philip baptized the Ethiopian. It's a marvelous story. And you see, Philip was very powerfully filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And it's, it's Acts 8, 26 through 40. And we'll work through this. You see, the angel of the Lord spake to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south way that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is the desert. There are those angels. And like I said, the one minister that I studied on the baptism said, You know, he, angels often accompanied these baptisms. So Philip obeyed the angel. He went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all of her treasure and had come to Jerusalem to worship. This man wanted to worship God. He wasn't a Jew, but he wanted to worship God. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading from Isaiah the prophet. And the Spirit of God said to Philip, Go near and join yourself in, in this chariot. And Philip ran to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. And he said, Do you understand what you read? And the man said, How can I accept someone should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And so Philip helped him interpret the scriptures and understand the scriptures and began to preach in verse 35 the scriptures. And they were on their way, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder us to be baptized right now? He wanted to be a new man in Christ right now. He, these, the opening up of the scriptures and the preaching of Peter brought him to salvation. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, to be baptized. And when they were come out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So you see, he was a new man in Christ. And he, and he was baptized, and he became a new man in Christ because he understood the Scriptures. And the baptism was so... Uh, so powerful, so significant to him, so meaningful to him. And, you know, I know some people have a great desire. I know I had a great desire. My husband had a great desire to be baptized when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And then a new man. Let's look at the new man that Christ made with Zacchaeus. And this story is found in Luke 19. I know you're familiar with this story because you've probably sang these songs in Bible school. But this is a remarkable story about a new man in Christ. And you see, it goes like this. Jesus, Luke 19, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And he could not, for the crowd was so great, and he was such a little statue. You see, this man, 
he had a great reputation and he had great riches. He got his riches because he cheated people and stole from people and frauded people. You ever heard of that word fraud? But you know, he was not happy with his reputation. He was not happy with his riches. He wanted more. You know, nothing can satisfy us but Jesus. You can have a reputation and you can have riches, but there's nothing more valuable than having Jesus. And you know what? When Jesus is with you, he gives you that abundant life. He gives you new life. He's your, he, he meets your every needs. And he says that he ran before and he climbed up into a sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus. There was such a great crowd, this was his only chance to see Jesus. Well, suddenly Jesus stopped and looked up at Zacchaeus in that tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down today, for I must abide at your house. Jesus was coming to his house. So he made haste, he came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured, saying that he has gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. The people couldn't understand why Jesus would go see Zacchaeus. But in verse 8, it says, Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, you know, this was a life-changing experience for Zacchaeus, his encounter with Jesus when Jesus came to his house. He said, Behold, Lord, I will give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusations, I will restore him four fourfold. In other words, he was willing to restore those that he cheated and frauded even by fourfold. He had taken money away from people and, and deceitfully taken their money, and he restored it to them. And Jesus said, This day is salvation has come to this house, for as much as he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You know, Zacchaeus was a new man with his, after he encountered Jesus Christ. And he can, you can be, he's a new you in Christ. You can be a new you. I love the story of the woman at the well. She was a new woman after she encountered Jesus. In John 4, she met Jesus at the well. And I just love this story that Jesus, he said that he had, told his disciples he had to go to Samaria. And he went to, verse 5, he went to Sychar near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There comes a woman of Samaria to draw a well and said to him, Give me a drink. She was thirsty, and he was thirsty, and the woman had a bucket and was ready and willing to draw water. And the disciples were gone into the city to buy meat, and then said the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. But Jesus said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is, that said, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you the living water. And the woman said, you don't have anything to draw, to draw up the water from the well, and the well is deep. And so he began to talk to the woman, and he said, whosoever drinks this water that I give shall never thirst again. But so whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall be like a well of water, spring up living everlasting water. So as they came to talk, Jesus, he just, he just spoke to her about her past, and he said, you, go and tell your husband, come hither. And the woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, you have spoken well, for you have had five husbands. And the man that is, that whom you now have is not your husband, and that you spoke truly. And she said, surely I perceive that you are a prophet. And so as she began to talk with Jesus, she developed a new life, a new perspective. She, Jesus told us, told him, says, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. And the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah comes, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said, I am that that speaks unto you. And you know what? The woman had an encounter with Jesus. She was a new you. 
It says she dropped her bucket, left her bucket, and ran into the city and invited people, come and see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is this not the Christ? And so they went out there. The people came and the village came. And Jesus spoke and he ministered in that village. And it says in verse 39, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on, on him. And he tarried there with them and abode two more days. And many believed because of this woman. You know, your new encounter with Christ and new you can reach to many people. It reached to her entire village. And Jesus met the woman at the well. And she became a new you. Well, for the sake of time, I will just talk about one more man, and we will just kind of briefly go over this in Mark 5. When Jesus met the demonic man on the, uh, in Mark 5, his disciples, they, they went to this place called Gadarenes, and immediately out of the ship came this man that was filled with demons. And he, he came out of the tombs. He was an unclean spirit. No man could tame him. He was bound with fetters. He, he broke the fetters apart. Day and night he ran in the mountains, crying and cutting himself with stones. But suddenly that man saw Jesus, and the spirit of the man was freed for a few moments before the demons would, uh, would um, empower him again. And he said, Jesus, he ran and worshiped Jesus for a brief moment. But then the demons began to operate within him again and said, What? They cried aloud and said, Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee, torment me not. And Jesus commanded the demons to leave this man. And the, man, the demon's name was Legion. He says, For we are many. And you know the story that the demons came out of the man, went into the pigs, and the pigs went over the cliff. There's about 2,000 pigs. But what is so wonderful about the story is that the people came to Jesus and they saw him that was possessed with the devil and little, had legion sitting and clothed in his right mind and they were sore afraid. An encounter with Jesus can put you in your right mind. An encounter with Jesus can free you from demonic oppression, from agitation, frustration. An encounter with Jesus can make you a new you. The man was so thankful that he wanted to go with Jesus and tell everybody. But Jesus said, It is best that you go home to your friends and tell them the great things the Lord has done for you and how he had compassion on you. You know, he wants you to be a new you. And I'm going to just end with this beautiful picture of this waterfall right now. And I know that you all love these waterfalls, and I want to read from John 10.10. 10. Don't you just love the things from nature? Jesus tells us that I've come. Let's just read this scripture in John 10.10. 10. Jesus says, The thief comes not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Look at the refreshing waters of the waterfall. His spirit will make you a new man, a new person. Jesus has come to give you new life, abundant life today. And Father, I pray for each and every one today that has listened to this message. I pray that they will be able to share it with their family and friends. And I pray that today we will see many that will become new yous, many that will become disciples of Jesus and even have the zeal and desire to be baptized. And we pray for your message to reach many today and encourage them in Jesus' name.